back to enchanting english today's session is mainly for standard 12 11 and 10 students who are going to appear for public examination and today's topic is sentence pattern let us learn how to identify the pattern of a given sentence so let us learn what are the elements that constitute a sentence so we have the following elements the first one is subject s stands for subject the second one is verb you know that verb denotes an action or a state and then the third one is object o stands for object and now the fourth one c stands for complement complement and the last one a it stands for adjunct a stands for adjunct so remember these are the different elements that we are going to make use of in a sentence so when you speak about object here again you have to understand that there are two kinds of objects so let me split this into two again objects are of two kinds one is direct object the other one is indirect object so do stands for direct object and io stands for indirect object now how to identify all these uh, it's very easy if you understand the rules regarding these different elements so first of all subject you know that subject is the doer of the action and to identify the sentence identify the subject in the sentence is quite easy you have already learned it in your earlier classes so let us consider an example a very simple sentence i played i played okay let me make it a very short sentence i have taken i played a very small sentence so when you look at it you have i this is a subject right and you have an action word here played so this shows an action what's the action here action of playing is given here right so this is verb and of course who is the doer of the action here the subject is the pronoun i so this is s so the pattern of the sentence is yes we subject and verb okay right so you know how to identify subject now s stands for subject it denotes the doer of the action and we stands for verb so we have made a very simple sentence with one subject and verb here so the pattern of the sentence is sv what's the pattern of the sentence sv okay right now let us look at the third element that is object the third element o stands for object now how do you identify object i told you there are two kinds of objects direct object indirect object okay now i'm going to just make some changes in the sentence that i gave you earlier so we have i played cricket i played cricket okay i have added another element now i have added one more element cricket let us now see what is the pattern of this sentence now here when you split it you understand that there are three elements right okay so let's uh, consider i is a subject played is the action word so you have we here now what is the next element it's very easy to find out played is the action word here okay and this is a transitive verb it takes an object okay right so what did i play you get the answer cricket what what did i play cricket so it answers a question what right so this is in fact an object and now to be very specific this is direct object okay right i played cricket there is only one object here so you can just write o alone okay so when you write the entire pattern we write svo we write svo subject verb and object 
Okay. Now, when should you specify direct and indirect object? When you have two objects in the same sentence. Okay. Right. So, this example I will give you after some time. Now, let us look at the fourth element which is complement. The fourth element C stands for complement. What do you mean by complement? Something that completes. So, here you mean that without this element, you cannot form a complete sentence. Okay? Right. So, I will give you an example for that. If you look at the sentence, she is smart. She is smart. Look at the sentence. She is smart. Okay? Right. Now, look at the pattern. You have again three elements here. The first one is she. Of course, it is a subject and here you have a verb which is this. You know that it's not like the other verb used here. This is not an action uh, verb. It is only an auxiliary verb. You have learned about auxiliary verb, helping verb. It, it just shows a state. Okay, fine. Anyhow, it is, an, it is a verb. So, we write this as we. Okay. Now, what is the next element? The next question is this. You try to read the sentence like this. She is. Can you put a full stop here? No. This becomes incomplete. The sentence becomes incomplete. You cannot uh, make a meaningful sentence with just these two elements. Okay. So the meaning of the sentence becomes complete only if you have this element. Okay. So this completes and this is a complement. And the other thing that you can remember, complement is something that says about the subject. Okay. Subject complement says about the subject and object complement says, uh, says about the object. So when you look at the sentence, smart, who is smart here? She, the person who is mentioned here as a subject is smart here. Okay. Right. So smart qualifies the subject here. This is a subject complement. Okay. So this is C. Understood? So you have S, V, C here. This is S, V, C. Okay. This is complement because I told you, you cannot make a complete sentence without using this uh, particular element. Another thing you can just associate. This quality goes to the person mentioned here. Okay. So this speaks about the subject. So, this is example for subject complement and you denote it using C. So, the pattern here is SVC. So, uh, till fourth ele element we have completed. Let's now move on to the fifth element. Uh, let's now see how to identify adjunct. So, this is the last element that you have to see. A stands for adjunct. I told you already. Adjunct. What do you mean by adjunct? Adjunct is an additional element. It is an additional element in a, in a sentence. Okay. Unlike complement, uh, which is uh, an essential element, adjunct is an additional element. So, under this you have all the adverbs. Okay. So, remember adjunct stands for adverb. Okay. Right. So, adverbs are of many kinds. And to remember very easily, just remember these three adverbs. Okay. M, P, T, manner, place, time. M, P, T, manner, place, time. Okay. Something that shows manner, something that shows place and something that shows time. Okay. Right. So, in order to elaborate on this, I will give you an example. You have, I played cricket yesterday. I played cricket yesterday. Now I have increased the number of elements. I started with two elements and now you have, you can see here you have four elements. Let's consider uh, this particular sentence and now let's look at it. Okay, you have four elements here. You know that the first one is the doer of the action. So it is subject. The second one is verb, action word. And now you have this, I play cricket and cricket, already we saw this, it is an object, right? So, you have object here, right? Now, I played cricket. When did I play cricket? You get the answer, yesterday. So, this particular element answers the question, when, okay? Right, so when shows time. So, this is an adverb. When shows time, so this is an adverb. 
So what is the pattern of the sentence? S V O A. So you get four elements here. This stands for yesterday shows time, right? Yesterday, today, tomorrow, all these are words that show time. So it is an adverb. So you got a uh, ad adjunct here. Yes, V O A. This is the pattern. Okay. So now I have covered almost all the elements that constitute a sentence. And now I have to give you another sentence where you will get two objects. I told you for objects you have two objects. Direct object and indirect object. Now look at the sentence. I gave her a gift. Look at the sentence. I gave her a gift. Okay, right. Look at the sentence. You have I subject. What is the action word here? Gave. So that's the verb. And now you have one element here. After that you have one more element. Find here you find two words. You have article a here and then you have gift which is noun form. Okay. Now even though you have these two are two different words you must not separate here. This is an article. It comes along with the noun. Okay. Right. So you have four elements here. Now let us look at this particular sentence. I gave her a gift. Okay. Now uh, what did I give her? A gift. What's the answer for this? A gift. So what did I give her? A gift. So it answers the question what. So you got direct object. Now whom did I give a gift? To her. Whom did I give a gift? To her. So you get indirect object here. Okay. So these two different elements answers the question what and whom. Remember, this is how you identify objects in a sentence. If you are given two objects in the same sentence, you must specify which is direct object there and which is indirect object there. Okay. So, you get the answer here. When you ask a question, what did I give? A gift. So, this answers the question what? So, it is direct object. Whom did I give a gift? To her. It answers the question indirect. So, it is an indirect object. Okay, right. So, always remember other easy thing is that always direct object stands for a thing. A gift is a thing, right. Now, indirect object always stands for a person. So, it can be him, her or it can be a noun, etc. Okay, so direct object stands for a thing. Indirect object stands for a person. This is one way to easily understand and identify Direct and indirect object. And remember the same sentence can be rewritten. It's not that always you can use only in this order. First indirect object and direct object. The sentence also you know can be rewritten like this. I gave a gift to her. Remember I have changed the order here. I gave a gift to her. Now again when you examine subject verb. Now, what did I give her? A gift. So, this is a direct object. And uh, whom did I give her? To her. So, here this becomes indirect object. Only thing is that when you place indirect object at last, you will get the preposition to. Okay. You will get the preposition to. So, this pattern is also possible. Here, S-V-I-O-D-O is the pattern. And here, S-V-D-O-I-O is the pattern. That is the only difference. And I think this is clear for you. Uh, now children, almost all the elements are covered. Now let us just learn a very simple trick. When you are given a sentence, remember, all these elements except adjunct comes only once in a sentence. Okay? All these elements except one element comes only once in a sentence. Adjunct can be placed can be used once or twice or thrice in a sentence. Okay, that means in a sentence you can have adverb of place, you can have adverb of time and you can even have adverb of manner in the same sentence. So let me give you an example. Yesterday I met him in the park. 
in the park. Okay, right. It's quite a lengthy sentence I've given you. But don't worry, it's very easy to identify. Yesterday, I met him in the park. Okay, let's begin with, see all the sentences I gave you before started with the subject. Okay, right. Here, when you uh, write the first sentence as subject, you are wrong. I told you how to identify. What is the action word here? You have the following elements. Okay, right. You have the following elements. Now, who is the uh, doer of the action here? I, the pronoun I. Okay, and what is the action word here? Met. That is very, very easy to understand. So, this is the action word here. Now, before the subject, you have placed something here. What is this? Yesterday, I told you yesterday, today, tomorrow, after uh, three weeks, uh, then in 2020, all these are time references. So, they are adverbs. Okay. So, how do you write? This is an adverb. So, you are going to label it as A. Okay. And then you have here, look at this. Yesterday, I met him in the park. Remaining, you have two more elements. Okay. Him and in the park. Okay. How, how will you identify these two elements? Okay. Right. I met somebody here. Right. Him. Okay. So, now I am going to ask a question. Whom did I meet in the park yesterday? Whom did I meet? I met him. You get the answer? Him. Okay. Now, I already told you when you ask a question whom, you get indirect object. When you ask a question what, you get direct object. Now, you, you don't have a direct object here. So, it's enough if you simply write O here. Okay. Fine. Then, uh, yesterday I met him. Where did I meet him yesterday? In the park. It shows place. It shows place. So, again, this is an adverb. It is a phrase. It is not one word that you find here. In the park. It's an adverbial phrase. Okay. But group of words placed together to show place. Okay. Right. So, here you cannot split separately. All these come together. Okay. So, what is the pattern here? A, yes, V, O, A. So, what did you observe here? You have one A here and you have another A here. So, you have got two A. In the same sentence. This is what I told you. You can have more than one adjunct in a sentence. But the other elements you will have only one in a sentence. So I think this is clear for you. Okay. Right. So we have used an adjunct before subject. Okay. So this, this is the speciality of the sentence. Now uh, I will give you another special kind of sentence. Where adjunct is placed between subject and verb. Okay. Now look at this sentence. She often tells lies. She often tells lies. Okay, right. Of course, here you have four elements. She often tells lies. Four elements. Right. How do you identify it? First thing, she is a subject. You know that. And what is the action word here? Which word shows action? Tells. So, this is a verb here. It means there is an element placed between subject and verb here. What is this element? This is often. Right? How often does she tell lie? Often. Remember words like often, never, ever, uh, scarcely, hardly. All these are adverbs of frequency. Okay? They are adverbs of frequency. Okay? So, you have to label it as A here. Now, she often tells. What does she often tell? What does she often tell? Lies. You get the answer? Lies. What does she often tell? Lies answers the question what? So what does it show? When it answers what? It is direct object. Since you have only one object, you just mention it as O. So what is the complete uh, pattern of the sentence? Yes, A, V, O. The complete pattern is S, A, V, O. So unlike the other sentences that you have seen, subject and verb are not placed one after the other. Okay, here you have A in between. This happens only for adverbs of frequency. So remember, I gave you one word here, often here. You can also remember other word, words like, other adverbs like, often, I have already used often, then, ever, never, 
hardly, scarcely. These were adverbs of frequency can be placed between subject and verb. Okay. But adverb of uh, place or time must not be placed between subject and verb. That means you cannot say I yesterday met him. You cannot change the order there. Yes. I yesterday met him is wrong. Place, adverb of place cannot be placed between subject and verb. Only adverb of frequency can be placed between subject and verb. Okay. So what are adverbs of frequency? Remember these adverbs. Often, ever, never, hardly, scarcely, etc. Okay. These words are used in between subject and verb. Okay. Right. So this is a special kind of sentence. I hope this is clear for you. Children, uh, now you may think... Uh, uh, whether it is possible to write a sentence using without using subject. Children, it is possible. Okay. Uh, you can have imperative sentences. Imperative sentences will not have subject. Okay. So, sentences like Be smart. The sentence, this is a complete sentence. Even though there are only two elements. Okay, right. Be smart. Then, open the door. Walk fast. All these are complete sentences. Okay, right. So, you have be smart, open the door, walk fast. Now, how to identify the pattern of this sentence? How to identify? Let's look at. You have two elements here. Okay. Be smart. Okay. Now you know that be is. Uh, uh, it's an auxiliary verb. Be is an auxiliary verb. Okay. Right. So you have be forms is, am, are, was, were, etc. So this is uh, a verb that shows a state. So this is a verb you understood. Now. Smart. Of course it's an adjective. Adjective. Meaning. Something that qualifies and noun, right? So, you say Sheila is smart. Ram is smart, right? So, smart qualifies the noun there, right? So, remember, normally adjectives will be complements. Adjectives are complements. So, smart is a word that shows quality. So, it is C, complement. Okay, fine. So, what is the pattern of the sentence? Just be see. You don't have a subject here. Subject is understood. When you say be smart, I mean, when I tell you be smart, I mean you be smart. Right? So, there's, an, there's, there's a subject there. It is understood. Okay? But uh, you can see that there's no subject mentioned here. Okay? So, the pattern is we see. Now, look at the sentence. Open the door. Right? Open. It's, a, it's an action word. Open what? The door. Right. So, it answers a question. What? So, it is an object. So, the pattern of the sentence is V-O. Pattern is V-O. Right. Now, look at the next sentence. Walk fast. Walk fast. Okay. You know that walk is the action word here. Okay. So, this is the verb used here. Walk fast. How should you walk? Fast. It shows manner. So, this is adverb of manner. So, what do you write here? A. Right. Walk fast. So it is A. So what is it? B A. Okay. It's an adverb. You know that. It shows. Uh, it modifies the verb here. No. It's an adverb. So it is A V A. So in all these sentences I haven't used a subject. It's an imperative sentence. So you may get even sentences like this where you don't find subject. Okay. So V C V O V A. These are uh, other special kinds of sentences, sentences which are imperative sentences. Okay, right. So, I think even this is clear for you. So, now we will move on to the task. Okay, right. Okay, children, now uh, let's look at uh, these sentences. These are the sentences I have uh, for you to test whether you have comprehended and understood. The first sentence, Priya is writing a letter now. Look at the sentence. Let us find out the elements. You know that you are speaking about Priya. So Priya is a subject here. What is the action word? Writing. And you have before that an auxiliary verb. Fine. You have to use it together. So together is writing. Together is a verb here. And now you have 
a letter and another element now okay let's look at these elements priya is writing what is priya writing a letter okay so answer the question what so what is that object you got object okay right when is she writing a letter now answer the question when so it is adverb you got time right so it is adverb so the pattern is e s v o a that's very easy now children look at the second sentence Priya is an intelligent girl. Here you have Priya. You are speaking about Priya, so it is subject. And now you have verb. Okay, it is is here. It doesn't show an action, but it shows a state. So this is an auxiliary verb. Fine. So that's also a verb here. So verb. And then you have an intelligent girl. You have three words here. So you may think that there are three elements. No, you don't have three elements, right? an intelligent girl it comes together it's a phrase an intelligent girl who is that intelligent girl priya who is mentioned here a subject so this is subject complement the whole thing together speaks about priya okay so it is a complement so the answer is yes we see right now the third one last year he won a medal look at the sentence you have last year what does it show time so it's very easy for you time shows i mean adverb when it is time place manner it's adverb right so it is a now you uh, speak about he the subject here is uh, he then what is the action word winning no its past tense is given here one so this is the action word now last year he won you have one more element a medal here medal before that you see an article but it should not be separated article comes together right so how do you identify last year he won what did he win a medal you got the answer a medal so this answers the question what again what is that element then o so what do you get it here a s v o the element i mean the sentence is a s v o right now the next one he rarely visits his mother you know that you speak about the whole thing uh, state something about the subject he here so this is yes now you have rarely visits and this together one element he rarely remember all words that end with ly are adverb okay so when you get words like rarely slowly beautifully all these are adverb you don't have any confusion about it you can immediately mark it as a so this is a you understood it is a because it ends with ly then visits is the action word so this is v now you have one more element you have two words here but only one element because this is possessive pronoun his mother her mother their mother etc come together you cannot separate it okay now uh, he rarely visits his mother visits whom visits whom his mother answers a question whom so it is an indirect object you have only one object i told you you have to just write o okay so it is a s a v o pattern is s a v o right now look at the last sentence here the teacher gave the students a test right the teacher gave the students a test so you have four elements now let us label the elements who is the action uh, i mean who does the action here the teacher okay so the whole thing is a subject here what is the action word here gave okay so that forms the verb then the teacher gave what did the teacher give a test right so what is it direct object and uh whom did the teacher give a test to the students whom did the teacher give a test to the students you get the answer here so this is indirect object here you have two objects so you are mentioning you are specifying which is indirect which is direct so what is the pattern here yes v i o d o the pattern is s v i o d o i think children 
all possible sentences I have given you now. And now you will not have any confusion regarding labeling the different elements in a sentence. And you are going to do it very easily. So keep practicing all these and do very well in your test and examination. Thank you for watching.